Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at integrating partial fractions so we can answer questions from exercise 11g. So basically here what we're going to be doing is splitting up a big fraction using partial fractions and then integrating the separate components of those partial fractions. So in this case here we're going to split up x minus 5 over x plus 1 x minus 2 into two separate fractions and then integrate those fractions separately. And remember, so let's just recap here how we're going to integrate, uh, split our fraction up into partial fractions. So we multiply through by x plus 1, x minus 2, or you can think of it as combining the fractions. So multiplying through by x plus 1, x minus 2 will give us x minus 5 equals a x minus 2 plus b x plus 1. And now what we do is we substitute in strategic values of x to make one of the coefficients disappear. So let's start by substituting in x equals 2. That will make this bracket equal 0 and the a coefficient will disappear. So 2 minus 5 will be minus 3, which will equal 2 plus 1, that's 3. So 3 times b, b must therefore equal minus 1. And substituting in minus 1, that's the value of x that will make the back bracket equal 0. So in this case here, it's going to be minus 6 equals minus 3a, so therefore a must equal 2. So therefore, going back up to our starting, um, the way we've split it up at the start, is going to be 2 over x plus 1 minus 1 over x minus 2. And now if we want to integrate this, we can always integrate something that's equivalent to it. So we're going to in be integrating this thing down at the bottom instead. So for doing these, we're going to use the Lun rules. So in this case here, we're looking for the tops of the fractions to be uh, the differential of the bottom of the fraction. So in this case here, we're going to be integrating them separately. So in the first case here, uh, we want a 1 on the top of that integral there because x plus 1 will differentiate to 1. However, you can't just scribble out a 2 and write a 1 there. Instead, let's factor out the 2 to the front. And in that case there, the integral is now going to be 2 ln of the bottom, 2 ln x plus 1. And remember, the 2 can always be incorporated inside the ln as a power. So it's ln of x plus 1 all squared. Then we're going to subtract the um, integral of the other part of the partial fractions. So that's going to be ln of x minus 2. So if we're subtracting one from the other, what we can do is we can divide the uh, logarithms inside the brackets. So it's going to be ln of x plus 1 all squared divided by x minus 2 plus c on the end. So there we are, that's how we integrate using partial fractions, pretty standard technique, you use integration, use partial fractions first, and then integrate those partial fractions second. So we're now going to get started on a slightly more difficult integration by partial fractions question, one where the highest power on the numerator is equal to the highest power on the denominator. And if you remember back to partial fractions, the way we deal with this as a partial fraction is we now compute the algebraic division of the numerator divided by the denominator. Now you can do this by, um, by long division or you can do this by the box method. However you prefer to do your algebraic division, that's up to you. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to split this component here into two separate fractions. Remember, we can factorize the bottom here into 3x plus 2, 3x minus 2. So then what we're going to do then is think about what this would look like if we were to add it together and then consider the numerators. So in this case here we'll have a brackets 3x minus 2 plus b brackets 3x plus 2 equals 6 minus 3x. And now we're going to substitute in strategic values of x to make one of the brackets equal 0. Now in this case here, if we set x equal to 2 over 3, we set the first bracket equal to 0. And substituting in the values there, we get 4b is equal to 4, so b must equal 1. And do the same thing for the second bracket, x must equal minus 2 over 3 this time. Substitute that into your um, equation the whole way through, and you get a is equal to minus 2. So in this case here, remember, a up here is going to now be minus 2, and the b here is going to equal 1. So it's going to be 1 from the 1 that we had initially at the start, minus 2 over 3x plus 2, 
plus 1 over 3x minus 2. So it's all now going to look like this thing here down the bottom. And if we're looking to integrate this thing over here, then we might as well integrate something that's simpler and equivalent to it to get the same answer. So when we integrate this thing here, instead we're going to integrate this thing here. So doing it separately um, and in the three individual components that it's set up in, we're going to have differential, so integral of 1 is x. Now for this term here, ideally we'd have a 3 on the top there, so we need then a, the, a constant multiplier of 2 thirds at the front, learn 3x plus 2, and for the last one, we're going to have, um, ideally we want a uh, 3 on the top there, but to cancel that out, or to balance it out rather, we'll have a third multiplier at the front. So in this case here, it's going to be a third ln 3x minus 2. So this is all of it combined then. It's going to be an x minus a third ln 3x plus 2 squared. Notice here how the 2 has crept inside the brackets of the ln as a square then plus a third ln 3x minus 2. Now, maybe we might want to combine the two logarithms here. Remember that this one is the plus term, so that means it's going to end up on the top of the fraction. This term here is the negative ln uh, component, so that's going to end up on the bottom of the ln fraction. So it's going to be x plus a third. Luckily, the both of the coefficients on the front of so the learns are both thirds, otherwise we wouldn't be able to do this straight away. They're both a third, so we can make it plus a third learn 3x minus 2 over 3x plus 2 squared, and all of that then is plus c. Right, okay then, your turn to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this question out. Right, okay then, so pr a pretty tricky partial fraction question, this one, one where we've got a quadratic term on the bottom. Now, just a reminder about that, when you have um, something like 3 plus 2x and then a 2 minus x squared on the bottom, when you create your partial fractions, you're going to have one part that has a 3 plus 2x on the bottom, obviously, but then you're going to need two parts for the fact you've got a squared term on the bottom here, one that is a quadratic term and one that is a linear term. So your partial fractions need to look like this thing here. The next thing we'll do is we'll times by the whole of this denominator on the left hand side. Now what's going to happen there is we're going to have 17 minus 5x equals a bracket 2 minus x squared plus b lots of 2 minus x 3 plus 2x, and then in the last term it's going to be plus c, 3 plus 2x. So now what we're going to do is substitute in strategic values of x so that one of the brackets, or maybe multiple of the brackets, will cancel out. The first one I reckon will be 2, that will cancel out this bracket here and this bracket here, so we'll only actually end up with the c term at the back there. So. Substituting in 2 on the left hand side as well, remember, gives us 17 minus 10, that's equal to 7. The A term gets cancelled out, the B term gets cancelled out, and when you substitute in 2 as the x value here, you get 2 times 2, which is 4, plus the 3, that gives you 7 in total, so we get 7c. So in this case here, c is 1. The next thing we need to do is make the 3 plus 2x bracket equal 0. So in this case here we're going to need the strategic value of minus 3 over 2. Now substituting that into both sides, minus 1.5 will preload our calculator with. That's going to be 17 minus 5 answer, which is 49 over 2. Equals 2 minus that minus 1.5 value. 2 minus answer, and then we'll square that. So we get 49 over 4. A. Now the B term will cancel out because it's got a 3 plus 2x bracket. The C term will cancel out because that's got a 3 plus 2x bracket in there. So A must therefore be uh, divided by 49 over 4, and I think you get 2 here. So we've got two values of the uh, numerators in our partial fractions here. 
but b here is a pretty tricky tricky one to work out because if we substitute in 2, that cancels out this one here, but it also will cancel out the B term. If we substitute in minus 1.5, it will cancel out the C term, but it will also cancel out the B term. No matter what we do here, the B term is going to get cancelled out. So what we do instead is we substitute in a really easy value for X. Let's use 0, for example. Now on the left-hand side here, we're going to get 17. On the right-hand side, we're going to get 4A, because the 2 is going to be squared. Then on the B term we're going to get 6B, and then on the C term we're going to get 3C. Now luckily we do know the values for A and C, so let's go ahead and substitute them in. We're going to get 8 plus 6B plus 3. Add those together and you get 11. 17 take away 11 is 6. So B, uh, 6B is equal to 6, or in other words B is equal to 1. So in this case here, instead of integrating 17 minus 5x over the big fraction there, we're going to be integrating instead um, a over 3 plus 2x. a was 2, so that's three, 2 over 3 plus 2x. Uh, b was 1, so it's going to be plus 1 over 2 minus x. And the c term was 1 as well, so that's going to be plus 1 over 3 minus 2x squared dx. Now for the first component here and the second component here we're going to be using a LUN rule of integration. On the last step here we're going to be using it having to use a different rule. Um, I'm going to be doing it quickly but in the, if you want to do it nice and slowly you're going to be doing a substitution of 2 minus x equals u to help you integrate this last term here. Although I'm going to be doing this pretty quickly. So now we are integrating these two terms here. Does the top, is, is the top the differential of the bottom on the first term? Yes, it is. So that's a perfect Lun integration. On the second term here, is the top the differential of the bottom? No, it's not. We would like a minus one on the top there. We can't create minuses out of thin air. We're going to need to balance that out with a negative at the front there. So in this case here, it's going to be minus Lun. 2 minus x. And on the last term here, I'm going to do this one nice and quickly, it's going to be one over, minus 1 over 2 minus x. And all of this now is going to be bounded by 1 and 0. So substituting in 1 first, we're going to have ln of 5 minus ln of 1, which is just 0, so that's nice and easy. Um, minus 1 over 2 minus 1, that's 1 over 1, so that's take away 1. Then we're going to be subtracting 0 being substituted in, so that's going to be ln 3 minus ln 2, and then substituting in 0 on the final term there, that's going to be a half. Now remember, we're subtracting the whole of these 0 substituted in, so there's going to be some double negatives coming into play here. In this case, we're going to have ln 5 minus ln 3, double negative for the plus ln 2, and then it's going to be minus 1 plus a half, so that's going to make it minus a half on the back there. So we're going to have minus, so we're going to have ln 10 over 3 as the combined logarithm take away one half. Remember that what I've assumed here is ln of one is zero and so I've cancelled that straight away out. So this is our final answer here. It's ln 10 over three minus a half. So have a go at some of these questions on your own. Then this is um, example 11G. Have a go at plenty of the problem solving questions and the exam style questions, making sure you ask your teacher for help if you need any.